guys welcome to this video this video is all about my very first fall horseback riding um it was nothing like i thought it was gonna be and i cannot wait to share this story with you guys Um, a lot of you guys have been following this story um, as it's been unfolding, but I wanted to have a, have a record of all of everything that happened before I forget about it. And this record is mostly for me, but I know some of you guys have been asking me a lot of questions and so hopefully I can answer them for you guys too. Some of the things I'm gonna answer in this video are what the heck happened? Um, what was my diagnosis? What was my treatment? How much did this whole thing cost? Because a lot of you guys have been asking me like, wow, all the stuff that happened to you, it must cost a lot. I'm gonna explain all of that, um, my prognosis, and when the heck I'm gonna be getting back on my horse. So I'm gonna start with what the heck happened. Um, some of you guys already know this. I woke up one Saturday morning um, and I had dreamed that I was gonna fall off my horse and I, I knew it was gonna happen. I had dreams like that all the time. I knew it was gonna happen. Coincidentally, I was going riding with a friend that day and I was like, oh gosh, am I gonna fall off my horse today? Um, I trust God to lead me and I don't let dreams like that change um, my destiny or change what I am gonna do with my life. So I braved up, got on my horse and rode beautifully. And that was on Saturday morning. My very next lesson and the very next time that I rode my horse was on Thursday. Um, and I had my lesson and the entire lesson I kept trying to be someone be um, helpful to my younger daughter who was nervous and I kept saying things like look at how great she's riding this is amazing I'm, I'm having such a good time through the whole lesson and then um, my coach asked uh, me to pick up the canter you guys should know that I have cantered a lot of times before on a, on this she's the third horse that I've ever cantered on um, I canter completely fine on our gelding um, this is the second time that I've cantered on our mare and I believed that even if she sped up quickly, I'd be able to stick it. I believe that with my whole heart. Some of you guys have told me in the past in the comment section that I'm like big and my legs are long. I should be able to wrap myself around her and I should be able to stick it. The minute I asked her to canter, I lost my balance. I wasn't balanced and I knew. It flashed in my head. I knew the second that I lost my balance that this ride was gonna end in a fall. I knew it. I also knew that I was gonna fall on the ground, brush myself off, and get back up. Like, I, I, I wasn't scared. I knew I was gonna fall before I even started to slide. I knew it. I lost my balance, wrapped my legs around, and squeezed tighter. Not to get her to go faster, but to hold on. In my head, I was just trying to stick it. I wasn't trying to prevent it. I wasn't trying to do, uh, I know how to do a one rein stop. I couldn't think past hold on. So my goal was hold on and I sent unclear messages to our mayor um, to go faster and so go faster she did. Um, I also was trying to steer a little and I, because I'm a beginner, I wasn't steering well. I pulled her to the inside. If I didn't have any reins and was just holding on for dear life, I probably would have been able to stick it. But because I pulled her to the inside, um, I started to slide. When I started to slide, um, for one split second, I thought maybe I should try and pull myself back up onto the horse. But I, I felt innately that that was not the best course of action. I felt like I just needed to go slide, do a little roll onto the ground, and then get back up. I felt like if I did hold on to her neck, that possibly I was gonna still fall and be still really close to the front of her hooves. I don't know, it was so fast. It was a split judgment call. I was gonna fall. I didn't feel like I was gonna be able to save myself, so I just fell. I don't remember landing at all. I just remember being on the ground and being in excruciating pain. I felt so much pain, I just started screaming. I started screaming and I said, I think I broke my pelvis. What I actually felt was like my legs were not attached to my pelvis. And I tried rolling around to get away from the pain and I couldn't get away from it. I instantly said to myself, I've been in extreme pain before, I know what to do. I went into whole birthing mode where I relaxed, got rid of the adrenaline, took a deep breath, tried to calm myself. 
um, and waited for a few seconds to see if that was going to decrease the paint because that's what happens when you're in labor. Um, nope, that did not work. I went back to screaming. I went back to screaming and I said to my coach, call an ambulance. And she said, do you think you need an ambulance? And I said, get the phone! Like, I did not want to mess around with any kind of pain. I knew that the sooner the ambulance got there, the faster I was going to get the pain medication and the sooner I was going to get help. So. Um, I'm going to fast forward to through all of the stuff that happened after that. That ambulance did come quickly. Um, they assessed me quickly. Every single person at the scene felt like it was a potential pelvic fracture. So when I fell, I was on my side. Um, I could not roll over onto my back because there was excruciating pain. But as I was laying on my side, it, there was excruciating pain. I felt like I needed to get onto my back. I just couldn't get there. Um, the ambulance decided to use this scoop lift and they scooped me up in this big huge plastic lift Carried me to the ambulance and and kept me in the ambulance on my side. The ambulance people were Unbelievable like when you are in that much pain you seem to get a connection with the people who are, are Saving you and taking you away from that pain so strongly. I wish I could see that lady that took care of me again. Like I could tear up by how amazing she was and how and how she supported me. Like she she's unbelievable. So um <sighs> Moving on, um, I got to the hospital. She actually started an IV and gave me some medication. It was a really short acting medication. It took the pain down so that it was tolerable. Um, but at the, by the time I got to the hospital, the pain started to really increase again. Um, they wheeled me in to the triage room and left me in the hallway to wait to be triaged. And the most amazing part of this story for me is that the ambulance attendant stayed with me. Even though nobody else was there and I was just crying and crying and screaming, please help, please help me. She stayed and I heard her go. I heard her talking. She would leave me and she would go to somebody else and she'd say, you know, I think this lady really needs to be seen right away. I, I think... She's not playing this up. She's not medication seeking. I think you guys need to help her. And very, very quickly they came and they helped me and it was so fast. They got me there. They got me in a room. The doctors were coming in. Um, Sam and the girls were coming in and they injected me with two more doses of medication and I started to feel so much better. Like it, it was so fast and it was all thanks to that ambulance lady. She ended up, she did come back later um, to check on me and she said that she told me the story about how she wouldn't leave me and she kept on going to every single person. She said she went to about seven people to make sure that they all came to me right away and I think that's phenomenal. Wow, I did not know this video was gonna be, uh, get so emotional. Um, Anyways, so moving on, I went to x-ray. I'm still crushed on my side. So basically all the pressure of my pelvis was crushed because I was laying on my side. I got to x-ray and they said, you're gonna have to lay on your back. And so they just took me and they said one, two, three, and they rolled me onto my back and it was excruciating for one second. The minute that I got on my back, all the pain, disappeared dramatically. So it went from being this acute, horrific pain of all my bones being squished to being laid flat out and be feeling so much more relief. So um, they did the x-ray, I went back into my room. Um, that's when uh, you guys, if you checked out on Facebook, videos then you'll see Sam did a live video as I was coming back from x-ray. Our ER doctors are often like interns or people you know finishing their residency that kind of thing. Um, he came in and he said that um, he looked at the x-ray the report wasn't back yet he looked at the x-ray it looked like I didn't have any broken bones so that was really good but that my uh, pelvis looked rotated slightly and he wasn't comfortable with that so he wanted to send me back to x-ray so um, I was still uh, pretty comfortable with my medication my IV and back to x-ray I went when I got back to x-ray the lady looked at me and she said why are you back here and I explained to her my diagnosis and the doctor didn't feel like anything was broken and she looked at me and her jaw hit the floor and she said to me oh well the report is back now and I can't really share any information with you but but you need to ask him to read the report before he tries to send you home and I was like 
oh. So I knew right then, something obviously was broken. Um, so as she did these other um, tests on me, I tried to like get the information out of her and she wouldn't budge. She said, it's not my place to say, but you have a very severe injury and you need to talk to your doctor about it. And so then I said, very sneakily, um, okay, so I just have one question. Is it my pelvis or is it my hip? And she said, well, when you came here the first time, you told me that it felt like your legs were not attached to your pelvis and you were right, it, it's your pelvis. So um, by the time I got back to my room the second time, I knew that there was something wrong with my pelvis. Um, but fast forward, I am back in my room. The doctor did have a chance to look at the results from the radiology and he came back and he said, well, um, I was wrong. You did in fact fracture your pelvis. So it was not a big surprise. So treatment for a broken pelvis is basically they give you some medication to kind of help with the pain you go home and you just take your time and you heal and um, I was totally okay with that but they decided that in my case it would be better to admit me because my um, broken pelvis is a little more severe than your average bro average broken pelvis so I was admitted and I spent the very first night in um, the ER. They had a special room um, over by the nurse's desk. It was kind of all closed off. It was pretty comfortable and I slept there with my IV and still got some really good pain medications and it was not a horrible night. I, it was not bad at all. Um, the next day I was moved into my new room and I met my physical therapist for the first time and when she came in she said to me, you know, um, do you, I, I was telling her about my injury and she she looked at me like whoa 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 she said so you don't know what's wrong with you and i said yeah i broke my pelvis and she said you have multiple broken bones in your pelvis and i said oh nobody told me that so i was like okay i have multiple broken bones and um next my doctor came in and he is amazing i have he was phenomenal um and i said like how many bro bones did i break and he said well let's just say you broke both sides of your pelvis and I was like oh so I broke two bones in my pelvis so nobody wanted to tell me what actually was my diagnosis like it was like cloak and dagger stuff I had to try and trick them all and I asked every single one that came in like well so what what did I break my uh, stay in the hospital was incredible I was able to see beauty in this whole entire experience I felt emotionally connected with so many of the people that cared for me my stay in the hospital was fairly uneventful um, I had lots of good medication the nursing care was phenomenal they allowed me to do as much as I could for myself and pretty much take care of myself they only assisted me when I needed them to I was so grateful for them for the stuff that they were able to help me with um, it just I just needed like that good week to um, kind of settle and repair and start in the healing process the doctor did discuss with me um, going to a rehab wing and staying there for two weeks and they said that I would come out of rehab walking independently walking um, that I'd be able to work on all the things I need to do have rehab a couple of times a day um, and an intense program it would be like the best thing for me but they said that also because of my age because I'm so strong um, that I they thought that I would do really well going home with in-home care as well and um, because it's Christmas and I have small kids at home and I'm a home person and I'm a family person I didn't want to be in the hospital anymore I was essentially taking care of myself completely just needing a little tiny bit of assistance getting my feet back into the bed um, after I used the washroom and I just was I wanted to go home and so we did make the decision to go home the hospital arranged every single thing for me they arranged for me to have a wheelchair and a walker and a commode they arranged for me to have nursing care if I need it which I have not needed it I do not need nursing care at home uh, they arranged for me to have a physical therapist come and treat me at home for as long as it takes they arranged to have an occupational therapist and in fact the day the morning after after I got home, um, the occupational therapist was here. She assessed me using all the equipment that they sent home with me um, just to make sure I had everything that I needed. It has just worked out so, so amazingly. Nobody carried the report of my breaks with them when they came to talk to me. They always were in my file. Nobody knew exactly what happened to me, what is broken. But when the occupational therapist came, she had the report. Um, I should have taken a video of it or taken a picture of it, but she actually had the report and she read it out to me and I have officially broken 
five bones in my pelvis, you guys. I had my very first fall off my horse, and I broke five bones. Five bones. Like, I can't even get over it. It's like, like, who does that? Who breaks five bones? Like, I know a lot of you guys have had some serious, crazy accidents with your horses, and I don't ever, like, to me, this has been enough it's been I, i'm grateful for this this injury i'm grateful that this is all that happened to me um but yeah five bones you guys so i have broken both sides of my pelvis i've broken the back wall of my pelvis i've broken my tailbone and just a bunch of breaks in there yeah five bones i broke five bones in my pelvis hopefully that is the final answer um i saw the report i read all the broken bones and yeah, that is my diagnosis. So my prognosis. Um, everybody says something different. Basically, your progno your your prognosis is basically ha individualized. Like I could be up and walking independently in a week. I could be doing stairs by the time we move in a week. Um, it just depends on how driven people are and how how people feel pain. I came home with um, a bunch of medication. I'm on the lowest dose of everything that I could be taking. And I'm doing so, so, so well. Cost. Let me tell you how much all of this cost. So in Canada, our healthcare is pretty much covered by our taxes. Um, so there's not any fees for healthcare, um, barring a few things like um, elective surgeries and like plastic surgery and like things that you would normally not be covered by our healthcare system. So basically what I did end up paying for out of all of the things that I've had done, all the treatments coming home, all the therapies coming to my house to take care of me, um, all the wheelchairs and the equipment, what I've paid is that to get home, I needed to take uh, ambulance service. And the reason I had to take it was because I'm not able to walk. I was not able to walk and I was not able to use stairs. So um, because of that, and I have stairs coming into my house, um, it cost me $226, $226 to get home. Um, my medication was completely covered at the hospital. I did not have to pay for any medication at the hospital. They brought me medication. I'm on um, a vitamins, a vitamin D and a calcium supplement. Then those are to help knit my bones back together. Um, I am on a pain medication that I take. It's a long lasting. I take it only twice a day, but in the hospital I was on stronger medication. I was also on like a bunch of injectable medications that um, in the first couple of days. Um, and I'm on extra strength Tylenol. So those are my medications and they were all covered in the hospital. Um, and now that I'm home, I have to buy my own medication. And it cost, because we have insurance as well, it cost me $58. So $226 plus $58 has been how much this injury has cost me. That's it. Um, I love Canada. Like, I don't know. Uh, so many people have told me stories about injuries and illnesses and how they can't afford to go to the doctor. And I just think that's crazy. Um, I'm so grateful for our healthcare system. It was the best care I have ever had in my entire life. It was phenomenal. It every I kept waiting for the shoe to drop. Every nurse was incredible. Every nurse, oh, I can't eat, like, I had tears sometimes talking to nurses. Um, so my final <coughs> thoughts that I wanted to share and I wanted to remember forever is that God has a plan. I don't know why he revealed to me in a dream that I was gonna fall. I don't know why I um, ended up in the hospital for six days and why I ended up with an injury that was going to take some recuperating time. Um, all I know is that he had a plan and I am looking for the reason for this. My family rallied around me. I honestly didn't know that that would happen. Like they all were at the hospital so fast and the minute they found out that I was hurt, they rallied around me. My husband has taken over and done every single thing that I have done in the past with our family um my kids are helping and things it's just it's just been such a beautiful experience um my pain level is so minute um except for the initial part where i was on my side crushing effectively crushing all my broken bones um my pain level has been really good i feel achy that's all i feel i feel achy nothing is acute um i the more I do, the more I have a little bit of pain, but it's been really minimal. I've been progressing so well through this. Like, it, it just seems 
I feel grateful for this injury. If this is what's going to happen to me, I feel so grateful that this is the, the this is, it could have been so much worse. Anyway, that is it. That is the story of my first fall, how I broke my pelvis in five places, and my recovery. My recovery is going so well. It is nine days after my accident, and I walked for the very first time today. I'm excited to get on with life, get on with our videos, get on with our horses, get on with living, and um, that's it, you guys. I thank you so much for watching my video, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Don't forget to make sure to hit that subscribe button down below.